So I'd like to issue one word of warning, or three words of warning, I guess, about using the Wiedemann Franz law. So the Wiedemann Franz law is incredibly useful in my when you're doing microscale thermal transport calculations, just to figure out you know how much contribution electrons have when conducting things. Um, and the constant that comes up is this Lorenz number, 2.45 e to the minus eight um, in SI units. Um, I would just like to make sure that we're completely clear about the fact that that number um, was only technically valid under a couple of assumptions. Um, one was that we had to have isotropic degenerate materials, i.e. a pure metal um, with sort of free electron type behavior. Secondly, we needed, and this was kind of implicit and I didn't really talk about it, we needed to be able to pull the scattering time outside of that integral and evaluate it at the Fermi energy. That's only true if the scattering time is not strongly energy dependent. Um, and thirdly, um, we needed the scattering time in order to be able to take the ratio of you know, the thermal conductivity to the electrical conductivity. We used the same scattering time when we did that calculation, meaning that we think that the scattering time is the same um, for charge transport and for energy transport. And it turns out none of those three assumptions is always true. There are a lot of cases where that is not true. So in fact, if you go to look up the measured value of the you know, Lorenz number that um, people have found in literature, you'll only find that it's close to that value for you know, metals and actually not even all metals. Um, the key thing is that that value is only true for degenerate isotropic metals. Um, Non-degenerate conductors actually have a different value to their um, Lorenz number. So in particular, lightly doped semiconductors only have a Lorenz number that can be theoretically shown to be closer to 1.5 e to the minus 8, which is only like half as big as what um, we had derived. So you want to make sure that you're using the correct Lorenz number um, for your situation. And the other big thing is that the value of the Lorenz number is quite a bit different, especially when elastic scattering dominates the scattering. Why is that? Because by definition, elastic scattering relaxes momentum, like it scatters a particle, but it doesn't change the energy, right? So you're, you are relaxing the direction of transport, but not necessarily the energy. Um, and so um, you can get a ratio, like the, the scattering times for those two things aren't the same. It takes longer for energy to change than it does for direction. Um, and so you'll get a different value of the Lorenz number if you try creating the ratio in that way. This becomes particularly important at low temperature because um, at low temperature there aren't any phonons around for electrons to collide with. Um, and so in that case, pretty much all interactions of electrons turn out to be elastic in nature. So they're bouncing off impurities and they typically don't have any way to lose memory of their energy in that case.